this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is something called what I call stuffed pepper boats. And you just need a few ingredients. So you want to have, you know, a variety of peppers. So today we're going to use red peppers because we're celebrating Columbus Day, right? Absolutely. So I just take the peppers like that, and you can do that one, and just take out the seeds. I just tap it out. Mm -hmm. Just tap it out like that. And if you want to just take that membrane off a little bit, you can do that. And then I just cut the peppers into quarters. So then you can take off any excess white membrane that's in there. It's not going to hurt you to eat that, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it doesn't look so nice. Mm -hmm. So there's one. And what kind of things do you like to eat anyway? I mean, being a mayor, you've got to be on the run all the time. Are you going to a lot of rubber chicken dinners? I, well, the good thing about Providence is even when you have, go to dinner every night, you never get rubber chicken because the food is so great. There's so <laughs> many wonderful restaurants. So, But I eat out almost every night. So That has got to be tough, eating tough. out every night. All right, so while you're doing the pepper, let me tell you what else we're going to put in this okay. so everybody at home knows too. I like to use something really spicy with this. So here we have soprasata, which is a, a pork product. Mm -hmm. And... As you can see, this one has peppercorns in it. And you can buy it in a store, just like this. For somebody who's so busy, you just get it in a container like this, a little package yeah. like this, and you're all ready to go. So to do enough peppers for six or seven people, we need six to eight peppers, depending on the size. And we need about a half a pound of the soprasata, or you could use salami if you wanted to, or mortadella. So now what we're gonna do is, we're going to take this, and you're going to put it in the food processor. So you can use any kind of meat, any prosciutto, salami. You could salami, use anything. prosciutto di parma. You could use salami. This has a little spicier flavor, so okay. I like this. All right, so now you pulse that up. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Very good. Now what we want are to add some olives. So I like some oil-cured olives, so we're okay. going to dump those in. This is so fast and so delicious, and here I have thyme. Okay. So we chopped have time chopped up. Okay, so now you want to whirl that up again. Just a couple hits. Good. And now we can take that out. We're going to put it in a bowl. Let's put it right in here. Here. There we go. Mm -hmm. And I always hold it by the bottom so that... So that's going to be our filling. Yeah, I got to get it with this spatula. Now, if you can get that olive oil that's right behind you there. Okay. And we want about two tablespoons of olive oil on this. Doesn't that smell good? Mm, delicious. And it's, it's so fast. All right, you're going to do it the systematic way. Okay, that's good. Now, you notice I didn't add any salt or pepper. We don't mm -hmm. need it because we've got the peppercorns in the soprasata, and mm. we've got that bite of the olives. But okay. we do want to add some cheese. So what I would like is for you to bring that cheese over. Okay. And here we're, we're working with a really nice cheese. This is a, let's show everybody what that is. This is an Asiago. Oh, nice. Asiago is a cheese that comes from the Veneto in northern Italy. So we want to take that label off. Mm -hmm. But that tells you that's authentic cheese. So now you can whack off a, a hunk of that. And it's a, it's a semi-soft cheese, you see? So it, it's not going to grate real easy, but you can shred it. So okay. why don't you just do it on the large holes? And while you're doing that, I'll get those peppers. And this just gets sprinkled on top? Yeah. So we're going to put our filling in here. Okay. Why don't you tell everybody about your Italian heritage? Well, in terms of Italian food, my, gra my grandparents, uh, my grandmother in particular, was obviously a wonderful, wonderful cook. But the real chef in my family was my, is my father, who's an unbelievable chef. Mm. Um, what part of Italy? Uh, f and my grandma's from Ischia, mm. right off the coast of Naples, oh, and my Ischia. grandfather's from Punta Gorda. Yeah, Ischia is beautiful. Have you been there? Many times. Wow. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, but my father's most famous for his seafood. You know, mm. All of the so he does really, like the fruta di mare. All the seafood and, and the eel and squid and. Mm. Well, look at how pretty these look. Beautiful. And your guests are going to love this because it's just something a little unusual that they. It Probably. looks like you've been spending all day. Doesn't it? It yeah. looks like you've been there forever. Okay, now you can sprinkle the cheese over right. the top. And we chose to use the Asiago cheese because it's a really good melting cheese. I mean, you could use a, another cheese mm -hmm. if you wanted to. You could use a Parmigiano Reggiano, which is a cow's milk cheese. Or you could use a Pecorino cheese if you wanted something that had a little bit of a sharper bite. So now we've got that ready, and yeah, yeah. we're going to give that just another 
little drizzle of olive oil, and I took the liberty of putting your oven on okay. at 350 degrees. These are going to bake for about 35 minutes or so, so you can go over and get those okay. in the oven because Great. we've got company coming.